right? And then uh, the idea is, is that uh, this is the gold standard. And this is going to bring back stability in our monetary system. It's going to make it possible for us to really uh, use Austrian economic principles. It's going to make it possible for us to uh, really create a true free market. You know, uh, I like to say you can't have a free market without a free market currency. If your if your currency can be manipulated, if it can be confiscated, if it can be weaponized against you, then you really don't have money. What you have is a social credit system. Um, and you know, this is why Monero and Goldbacks are both solving a similar problem, just in slightly different ways. This week on Monero Talk is sponsored by Cake Wallet. Store, send, receive, and exchange your Monero and Bitcoin safely on iOS and Android too. Cake Wallet is open source and you always control your own keys. And by IVPN. Resist online surveillance with IVPN, a privacy-focused, audited, and transparent VPN provider that accepts Monero directly. CakeWallet and IVPN are trusted and verified by the Monero community. Monero Talk is also made possible from contributions by viewers and listeners like you, and supporting us is easier than ever by typing in MoneroTalk.crypto in your cake wallet send address field to send us a tip. This week on Monero Talk. Douglas Tuman interviews Benjamin Schaffer, who works as legal counsel for Goldback, the company producing the world's first physical, interchangeable gold money notes. The two weigh the similarities and differences between Monero and Goldbacks, buying Goldbacks with Monero, the minting process and why Goldbacks are harder to counterfeit than dollar bills, how holding affects adoption and usage, and more. Monero Talk starts now. All right, Benjamin, what's going on, man? Hey, doing good. Hope you had a good time in Vegas. Last time I, I saw you was at the Freedom Fest. I did. I had a great time. I um, That was my first time there. So it was a unique experience. Awesome. Met uh, a lot of liberty loving people had a lot of uh, amazing conversations people working on interesting pro liberty ideas I, yep. I found it really interesting it was better than the uh in my mind better than the typical kind of crypto conference it was a nice mix of people you know oh yeah absolutely and uh different people with uh different ideas different artistic ideas too i've seen i saw a lot of beautiful things happening so yeah and uh, certainly a lot of gold lovers there. That, that must have been a, a good venue for you. I'm sure the gold backs uh, did well over there, right? Yeah, they did. In fact, um, you know, when we go to Freedom Fest, um, it isn't just about um, selling gold backs. In fact, that's, that's a very small part of it. It's really a big part of it is finding the investors that we need in order to really move the project forward into whole new markets. A lot of movers and shakers at, uh, at something like Freedom Fest. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, yeah, t tell us more. I guess first you need to you need to tell everybody what goldbacks are. I just assume everybody knows. I know. I know. I know sure. From Pork Fest, um, my first introduction to goldbacks was I guess two years ago at Pork Fest. Awesome. I had heard. Yeah, we didn't them. even have the New Hampshire. We didn't even have the New Hampshire uh, goldback yet. Uh, um, and, two uh, years ago. Yeah, that was the first time I got my hands on one. Yeah. So yeah, goldbacks, gold money. That's what they are. Right. And then uh, the idea is, is that uh, this is the gold standard and this is going to bring back stability in our monetary system. It's going to make it possible for us to really uh, use Austrian economic principles. It's going to make it possible for us to uh, really create a true free market. You know, uh, I like to say you can't have a free market without a free market currency. If your if your currency can be manipulated, if it can be confiscated, if it can be weaponized against you, then you really don't have money. What you have is a social credit system. Um, and, you know, this is why Monero and Goldbacks are both solving a similar problem, just in slightly different ways. Monero is uh, digital Goldbacks. Yeah, in a lot of ways it is, right? <laughs> um, and what we need to do, of course, is find a way to merge the systems even better. But we want to make sure that, uh, you know, if, if you don't have privacy, do you really have property? I mean, that privacy, uh, rights to privacy and the rights to property are so inextricably linked uh, that you really can't say that you own something if you don't have privacy in it. Yeah, you are you are preaching to the choir, my man. Uh, yeah. <laughs> might as well be talking about Monero, right? Uh, two, two different tools trying to uh, achieve this, the same outcomes. Um, but yeah, I want to talk to you more. We can talk about it. You know, we can get into it a little later, but 
this idea of how maybe perhaps they can work together. Yeah. But before we move on, to tell, tell us more about the gold back itself. I mean, like I said, I got my hands on one the first time two years ago. I love that my daughter loves them. She's been collecting them ever since. She did pretty well at Pork Fest. Uh, <laughs> collecting a few. For <laughs> yeah, she's been selling various things, trading up, working her way up to get the gold back. She wants those more than anything else. Uh, nice. She, she naturally well, figured it out. You know, and as the years go by, gold is going to be worth more than those fiat dollars that she could have otherwise gotten. Um, right. So what is the gold back? The gold back is basically this very thin coin, right? It's, it's paper thin, basically. In fact, it's probably thinner than paper, the coin itself. And then it's laminated basically between these polymer layers on the front polymer layer. There's this artwork of various kinds, um, that, uh, teaches different lessons of different virtues. So for example, this is the Utah one, the Utah one, uh, is prudence. Um, and so it's in Latin it says Prudente here um the back of a gold back is actually nothing but the gold itself there's no printing on the backs but there's still this image there's still a negative reverse image of what was on the front even right down to the security features even including the uh, the serial number the serial number is in the gold itself um and the idea of that is this is an uncounterfeitable currency or at least it's the most uncounterfeitable currency i believe in the world today um, it's harder to make a copy of one of these, a lot harder to make a copy of one of these than it is to make a convincing hundred dollar bill, uh, U.S. dollar bill or um, or a euro or any of the other currencies. This is really, really um, at this point, probably impossible for anybody to make a fake. Uh, and then each one contains the gold right in it. So, for example, if you've got one twenty five gold back note or 25 ones, it's the same amount of gold. And you can actually feel that weight difference when you feel the flex ability of a 25 versus a one, it's it's substantially more, more gold there. It's literally 25 times as much gold. And so the idea is, is that this makes it possible for us to use gold as real money. And, you know, everybody knows that gold is real money, but is it really? There's things that, um, that money does that gold hasn't ever really been able to do very well, like make small purchases or make change, right? Um, people have a one ounce gold coin or even a one ounce silver coin. It's too valuable for a lot of purchases. If you can't make change any smaller than those one ounce coins. Um, so some people have turned to things like mercury dimes and things like that. And one gold back is, well, with silver taking a plunge right now, it's worth more than a mercury dime. But in generally, the idea is this is about as small as you can get. Um, in any precious metal system. And yet it's actual pure gold. So there's no speculation between the different um, the different metals. This is a single metal system. It's only gold, pure gold. Um, and that prevents people from, you know, buying up all the silver to melt it down. So buy up more gold to buy more silver to melt it down and, and, and problems like that that have arisen in the past. So we, we feel that we've basically solved the cash problem. This is cash untraceable cash, durable, fungible, interchangeable cash. Um, but of course, in our modern digital age, that's where Monero comes in a little bit too, right? Because we think that we've created the world's best cash that's ever been invented. Um, but it's, it's only real downside is it's slow in the digital economy to have to deal with a physical piece of gold. You can't shove it into the computer. It doesn't pop out the other end uh, on the other side. Yeah, right. Figure that part out. <laughs> yep. And so we're figuring out better ways. I mean, there's ways you can, uh, ha we can each have a gold back account, for example, through something like the United Precious Metals Association. And then I could send you di digitally, I could transfer some of the gold backs that are deposited in my deposit account into your deposit account, sort of like Venmoing each other. So that's something that we can do at this point. But um, it's not a token, you know, it's not a proper blockchain. Mm -hmm. um, not yet. It's not on any of those yet. But I think that's the future um, of banking, right? The future of money is going to be, I think, diverging. Um, the fiat systems are leaning into the idea of creating digital currencies that will be even more manipulatable, basically social credit systems. Um, and then those of us who value privacy and property rights and free markets are going to be leaning into finding new ways to make money even more untraceable, even more valuable, um, you know, intrinsically valuable. 
rather than um, having it just be based on whatever the market, um, you know, various other forces or even manipulative forces uh, can change the value of it, you know, like the inflation of the dollar and stuff. Tell me more about about it though physically, like serial numbers. Why does it why does it even have serial numbers on it? Yeah, they've got serial numbers primarily so that we can track and prove the exact purity of each one. Um, now, this isn't something that we currently have online, so it's not that easy to look up. But you can look up Valorum, which is the mint that creates them, um, and see that they are certified and recognized by not only the U.S. government, but governments around the world as uh, being highly specialized in um, having the exact weight and purity that they guarantee in their in their bullion products. And that's basically what this is. It's just a very, very small piece of gold bullion. Um, and so that's all tra- that's all look upable. And that's really the main point of the serial number is it makes it really um, it's, it's another security feature. It makes it very, very difficult for somebody to imitate uh, because this serial number is basically a key that can then um, tell them about each individual assay, uh, which is basically the quality control. Assay is the fancy word we use for figuring out the quality, the weight and the purity of a gold product. And so each time we make a physical gold back, um, some of them are taken from random out of any particular batch or group of gold backs and melted down. Um, And when they're melted down, we take the remaining gold and weigh that and make sure that it is at least, and it's usually a couple percent more than the guaranteed amount on each gold back. So let me show this to you. One gold back is one one thousandth of a troy ounce, right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And so that's printed onto each onto each one. Of course, you know you get bigger. You've got a you got like a fifty, a fifty. Of course, fifty thousandths is the same as one twentieth. And um, uh, and so that, that's the nice thing. Uh, people will talk about a gold-backed currency, which is one of the reasons why it's fun plan where it's to have the gold back, right? Um, but this isn't just backed up by gold. Now, it is backed up by gold. We will exchange these for U.S.-minted gold coins, but it is also um, made out of gold, you know? So you don't have to worry about trusting our institution to hold the gold for you or redeem that gold or not to overly fractionally reserve that gold. It's not fractionally reserved at all. The gold is in your pocket. Um, and that that's really what makes it possible for us to say that it really is completely private, completely secure, um, and, and valuable intrinsically, no matter where you go or what you do. Um, right now, the purchasing power of one gold back is about the price of a sandwich or a loaf of bread or something like that. My guess is in a thousand years, it will have a similar purchasing power as it does now. Yeah. And if if a product like this existed a thousand years ago, now of course it couldn't have because the technology we use to make these is uh, was actually invented less than ten years ago. It's really an advanced technology. Um, but if it did, it would have bought you about the same amount of goods and services. Um, and that's just because of the scarcity of gold. In until or unless we reach a completely post scarcity society like. Uh, like Star Trek or something like that, where you can push a button and cheeseburgers come out or whatever you want out of your replicator or something like that, um, then gold will always be valuable because um, uh, even it's an element, right? And as an element, it's not only durable and beautiful, it's rare. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And so there's only ever so much of it. Now, I mentioned just a second ago about the technology we use to make these. The technology, really, um, you could think of gold back as a currency company as a wholesaler for this currency, but it's really more than that. We're a technology company. We're bringing a new monetary technology to the world stage. And you know uh, how difficult it is sometimes to explain to the uninitiated what a blockchain is and how that works and why that matters. It's kind of the same thing for us. We're trying to explain why, what vacuum deposition is, why this matters. Um, Vacuum deposition, you could think of it like 3D printing. What we're doing to create this is literally at an atomic level, we have these lasers. Um, It's more than one at a time, more than one laser at a time. But we have these lasers that are basically um, in a vacuum chamber, depositing the gold atoms, bombarding the surface with the gold atoms and fusing them into the coin. So this isn't done the way most coins are. Most coins are just stamped, right? It's a subtractive process. You smash out 
anything and that what you're left with is the one ounce of gold. Mm -hmm. In this case, we're not taking a bunch of gold and flattening it out into this. We're taking, we start with just a piece of polymer and then we start bombarding it with gold atoms until we build it up. So you could think of it like, a, like I was saying, like 3D printing in a vacuum chamber where the nozzle is the laser and the filament is gold. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, and this technology was really invented for to be able to create nanocomputers. Um, but the benefits of that are this reverse image on the back that can't be faked, um, that cannot be counterfeited because we've built that up one atom at a time. And even if you if you put one of these under a microscope, it's really fascinating looking. As you can see, each tiny ridge of gold atoms that takes on all the way down to an atomic level, all of the security features of the note, um, including the serial number. So the idea is if we've imprinted this with a cryptographic key at an atomic level that says this piece of gold is exactly this weight, exactly this purity, then it can travel in commerce. Um, whereas a lot of other gold can't. Now here's something you don't normally think about. Uh, when you think about gold is what about counterfeiting? Um, most people don't realize that counterfeiting is rampant and a major problem in the gold and silver market because a gold or a silver coin, um, it can be counterfeited quite easily, actually. Um, people say, well, yeah, but what if I had one of those things that can test if it's gold or not? Well, that can test if the outside is gold. What if I x-ray it? Well, then you can do a little bit more, but you have to have thousands of dollars of equipment to verify it. Well, let's say you want to sell, you know, lemonade stand. Do you have time to spend, you know, thousands of dollars on specialized equipment in order to test the validity of your gold and your silver and its purity at every step? No, you just can't. Um, and this solves that too. This technology means that whenever you see one of these, once you've seen it, you know the difference between this and and something else. It can't, and you know what to look for then you'll never be fooled by a fake. And then you can just say, oh yeah, thanks. Uh, okay, that's 12 gold backs. Boom, 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 I've got my 12 gold backs. Here's your products. Off we go. Um, about lunch today for a couple of guys. It was 10 gold backs. Um, and he didn't have to get out any fancy equipment. He just was like, okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Boom, we're good. Well, but he, but he trusted the issuer, right? I mean, he's trusting right. that. Right, so, so there... Yeah, there's a certain level of trust, maybe, but but it's not nearly the complex level of trust that's necessary for almost any other currency system. Mm -hmm. We say that, for example, that Bitcoin and Monero, these blockchain technologies, that they transcend trust, and they do. But you would have to, still have to put your trust in the concept of the blockchain. If sure. you have to understand that that cannot create double spends and what that even means. Mm -hmm. um, same thing here. Yeah, you have to put your trust somewhat in the issuer, um, but you don't have to take our word for it. I don't want you to. Feel free to look up uh, on goldback.com or look up in Valorum or just type goldback into a search browser. And you can see that there are hundreds, if not thousands, of independent bullion houses and assayers and quality control that have all tested these and proven that they are what they say they are. So if somebody wanted to give me, you know, a, a million dollars in, in gold backs uh, and I wanted to, you know, verify it, what would, what would be the process to like, you know, check to make sure they, they, they aren't counterfeits? Right. Um, well, I'd say the only really quick way, if you had a million dollars worth, so that's about 300 and something thousand gold backs, right? That would be heavy, right? That would be huge. Um but if you did have that, I mean, that would be a, probably, it might fit in a backpack, right? Because it is gold, so it is fairly small. But, you know, it would weigh like 70 pounds or something like that. The first thing I would do is I'd just weigh it um, if you're going to want to do it all at once. But if you look at them individually, what you're going to, here's a couple of things to look for. Um, each gold back is printed with security features. So you got the serial numbers. You've got this security strip that runs down the bill. You've got uh, these seals um, and the year and things like that. Um, in the corners, you've got these little tiny symbols with all of this little filigree and whatnot. I mean, it's almost hard for my camera even to pick it up. Um, it's something that is would be me messed up by any uh, any copier. And actually, here's a, here's a fun point. 
a photocopier can't take a photocopy of this because it's so reflective. It just comes out as a big black uh, mess, essentially. Um, if you were to separate it out, maybe here, I'm giving tips to the counterfeiters. If you were to separate it out, maybe and put it on a different background and scan it really close, then maybe you could recreate some of it, but you'd have to use digital artwork because um, you couldn't just copy it, right? You'd have to recreate it almost most of these security features. Um, but in spite of all those printed security features, you've got the gold. Now the gold is what makes this reflective. A gold back with no gold in it is literally just clear. It's just transparent, right? Cause this is clear polymer. So every bit of shiny you're seeing is the gold. Mm -hmm. Um, but is there like a machine to put it under to, you know, like a spec? Yeah. Yeah, there are. But I mean, I'm just saying uh, this is the, you know, if I'm doing this at my garage sale, how do I tell mm -hmm. stuff, right? Uh, without buying the equipment. But yeah, um, you can x-ray it. You can use a spectrometer to, to do it. Um, this only works on the one, but here's a fun one. If you take your, um, take a fairly bright light, like your camera flash, and you put it over the top of it. Like I said, this only works on a one. And you take that and you put it on part of the gold back with as little printing as possible, I would suggest. And then you look straight at it. Do you see that? Mm -hmm. see you can light. see the bulb through the gold slightly, right? Yeah, I see. It's light. like a little um, turquoise looking dot, mm -hmm. right? Um, any powerful uh, flashlight or concentrated light will do that. Um, but only on the one because it's the only one that's thin enough. Basically, what's happening is the reason why gold has this this luster. Why does why is gold this warm? Well, these warm tones, right? Because that's what it reflects, and so it filters out almost every bit of visible light except some of those bluish greenish tones mm -hmm. are filtered out by gold. And so, for example, astronauts use a very similar technology to this in the visors for their um, their helmets in order, because uh, they don't have the atmosphere to protect them, right? They need something that will protect them from cosmic rays and a bunch of these and electromagnetic spectrum um, uh, things and keep them safe inside that suit. And one of the ways they do that is by lining it with a little tiny bit of gold like this. Um, so there's one. Here's, here's my favorite. Um, besides the fact that, just look at the back. If the back is blank, it's fake. If the back is a reverse of the front, then it's a real gold back. Um, but where there's nothing printed, you know, it says Utah gold back there, but look, it's not nothing. Let's see if I can get the camera to pick this up. See how there's this pattern in the background? Mm -hmm. That pattern is not just print is not printed. Like I said, there's no printing on the back of this gold back that is embedded in the gold itself at an atomic level by the laser. And so, um, that, that can't be faked unless you're using this vacuum deposition process with a laser, right? Well, the facility that uh, we just built to expand our production, um, we've got, we've gotten to the point now where we are selling about four to $5 million worth of gold backs every month into the market right now. So it's really accelerating its growth um, and going from a very small local currency project to being much more of a regional currency project. Um, but in order to build that facility, just so we could even ramp up to that level, um, it costs us about $7 million. Um, I can't imagine, I can't imagine a counterfeiter spending seven or $8 million and years of work to try to recreate something like this. And let, let's say they succeed, let's say they succeed. And, the, but here, but then what would, what would the benefit be? What would the benefit be? Let's say they make a fake gold back, but they still had to make it out of gold or it wouldn't look like this. The only thing they could really do is they try to short you the amount of gold. They give you less gold than a real gold back. But here's the weird thing. A blind person, even a blind man could still tell you if it was real or fake because you can feel this texture and you can feel the weight difference. This 25, if, if you get a 25 gold back in 10 or 15 years and some counterfeiter is trying to make these as fakes, the 25 will feel the same thickness as the one, right? Mm -hmm. And even a blind person can tell the difference, in which case there'd be absolutely still no point in trying to counterfeit it because you'd be caught immediately. So how is the the cost of production covered? Like how, what's what's kind of the right. business model of gold backs? Yeah. So this is, this is a, this is a, a, a tough question because people will often kind of be caught up mentally in the old fashioned way of thinking about bullion. 
Um, and that is generally we treat gold not like it's money, but like it's a commodity that you can buy some of and sell it later. You know, you can think of it like um, inventory for a retailer. Um, people buy a bunch of gold now at a price higher than the spot rate. Um, they pay an extra premium for the privilege of actually owning and possessing the gold. And then later, after inflation has taken its toll for a while, they will sell it back at some price at a spot-ish or maybe even below spot these days. Um, these days, however, it's usually still above spot, but considerably less um, proportionally than what they had to pay for it. So basically they're paying on both ends for the privilege of owning gold. And then the only real benefit of owning gold in the middle is that inflation isn't destroying its value, but you're still paying for it because you're paying for it twice. When you leave the dollar system and when you return to the dollar system, you got to pay for that privilege of owning gold and avoiding that inflation for that time period. Um, gold backs don't work that way. So we're not as concerned about the premium over spot. And I bring that up because the, your question was, what about the cost to manufacture these, which is not cheap? Um, in fact, the 50 gold back takes 50 times as much electricity and time to create as the one. Because it's this vacuum deposition process where we're depositing the gold, um, it takes 50 times the amount of electricity in order to make the 50 because we have to lay it on so thick in order to create that. Um, and so per gold back, it's, it's a dollar something, maybe a buck 50. It's probably a little less than a buck 50. We have to keep the lights on. We charge about a buck 50, uh, for the manufacture of each gold back and each one's one, one, one thousandth of an ounce. So if, if one ounce, um, especially after the, the cost of actually purchasing physical gold, um, is about $2,000 an ounce right now. Um, the spot price of course is 18 something, but the, um, to the possession price to get some gold is often close to 2000. So let's round it to that for, um, ease's sake. This is only one 1,000th of a Troy ounce. So you'd think if it was based on the same kinds of premiums as other gold products, one gold back should be worth $2 by that, by that, uh, kind of math. Mm -hmm. But instead today's exchange rate is $3 and 83 cents, almost double that. And so people will say, well, that's 80% over spot or a hundred percent over spot. So, um, why would I want a gold back over a gold coin when I can get a gold coin for maybe seven or 8% over spot, but a gold back is 80% or 90% over spot. Why would I do that? Um, and yet the answer is you want the gold back. You don't want the gold coin. This is still more valuable. Why? Because this has a, a marketability, a liquidity that the gold coin does not. With the gold coin, what you're going to do, like I was saying, is you pay on both ends. You pay a premium to buy it. You lose that, uh, uh, even more of a premium when you sell it. Um, and then in order to buy anything, you still need dollars. In this case, you exit using dollars. You, you opt out of that dystopia, as you would put it, mm -hmm. and into a sound money system. And then you just spend these. There are hundreds of businesses that accept payment um, in these right at the right at the counter, right at the cash register. Um, like the lunch I bought today, I bought this. Um, we went to this Japanese restaurant. And they had like the really fancy ramen. We're not talking like you know cup of noodles ramen. We're talking all these fresh ingredients and homemade noodles and all this cool stuff, um, right? And so I paid them in gold backs. Uh, so. I just spent these. Now, the fun thing about it is, let's say you buy a gold back at the exchange rate, about $385 today, um, and then you go spend it, you're going to get $385 worth of credit. So how much is your premium? Your premium is zero on this gold. Um, and so there's basically just two different ways of looking at it. I'll tell people, people will say, well, what's the premium on your gold product? And I'll say, there's two ways of looking at it. And the most accurate way of looking at it I believe is that our premiums are zero because the marketability, the usability of this is it is as money. So it's true that if you were to melt a bunch of these down to make a ring or jewelry or something like that, um, you'd lose that premium. You'd lose that value. Um, but there's no reason for you to do that unless, you know, uh, for example, feel free to trade me um, gold backs for gold all day long. In fact, we will do that. One of the things that it says at the bottom is that we will exchange these for gold coin. Uh, there we go. 
exchangeable by gold back ink and us gold coin to the bearer on demand right that means that um if if you do want to make jewelry don't melt these down give them back to us we'll give you gold uh, and honestly, that even wouldn't be your best deal. Your best deal would be to just spend them to buy even more gold than, um, than the trade-in value. Do they potentially lose their goldness over time? Like a coin? No, that's another big plus. Thanks for bringing that up. The reason they don't is because they're laminated. So one of the biggest problems with a gold or silver coin in circulation has always been that they're rubbing together in your pocket. You don't think that's that big of a deal, and it isn't that big of a deal on a day-to-day -day basis. But over a decade or more, they they rub down, and they lose a significant quantity of their metal content. The gold back is safely encased in a proprietary polymer, which is actually a, a polyester that we use. Um, and so no matter how much I rub this, I can make the picture more dull. I can crumple it up. And it'll leave it'll leave uh, seams and folds, but the gold will still be inside. And so long as the gold is inside this protective case, it's still full gold content, and we'll trade you for a new one, or you can spend it as you know in the marketplace, uh, just like a brand new one, right? Um, it's sort of uh, th there's a basically a lesson on self worth I was taught one time where they said you know uh, pull out a twenty dollar bill and they say well what's this worth it's worth twenty bucks you know. What happens if I what happens if I beat it up? What happens if it has a hard life? You know? What's it worth now? It's still worth 20 bucks. Same thing with the gold back, thankfully, um, which wasn't the case um, with a lot of the gold coins. Whatever you really can't do too much to it that will make it lose its gold content. They're waterproof. They aren't fireproof because you can melt them and get the stuff back out. Um, but they're they're tearproof. We we're actually passing one around for a little while there. It, it did get a little stretched and a little ugly, but uh, we we're passing one, one around for a while there, saying if you can rip this with your bare hands, we'll give you one for free. And no one no one's ever been able to do it, not with their bare hands. I mean, mm -hmm. some strong guys, but it's just it's not terrible. They're very very strong. Very cool, man. Very cool. Is there any concern that they can become traceable or markable in ways? Like, um, I suppose on there, like, could they, I suppose with the serial numbers, what could happen is, is that, uh, uh, let's say we get to the point, And of course this would be a real victory point for us, right? Let's say we get to the point where, um, the U S dollar is not in circulation anymore. Every bit of commerce is circulating in the gold bag. Um, I suppose what could happen is, is that, uh, Oh, and, you know, they had to change some laws, too. Maybe you've got a police state going on, and this police state wants to track the money. They would have to write down every individual serial number and say, okay, Bob's Noodle House had this serial number on this date, and then they put it back in circulation. And then they'd have to see where else it pops up, which means they'd have to be searching everybody still all the time and writing down all the serial numbers. Yeah, then they might be able to see where it moves around. You know, there's a, a more of a social experiment about this than uh, than real police tracing is something called where's George dot com. I don't know if you ever heard of it or seen it on a bill. Yeah, I did. Yeah. So, you know, people will stamp their bill with a little thing that says where's George. And then people can uh, whenever they see where's George on on a dollar, they can go to their computer and type it in and say, hey, I, I picked this up at the grocery store or as change from this or that. Um, and then they go spend it and you see where else that bill ends up popping up and other people logging in and saying where that bill was. We could probably, someone could probably do that with the serial numbers on the goldbacks. They are unique. Um, they're not sequential. They are created through a randomization process. Um, but... Yeah, then I guess you could track a little bit of where it pops up here and there. But other than that, okay. really no, right? No RFID mm -hmm. involved. This is just solid gold in your pocket. I don't know how they'd ever know or even ever confiscate it, you know? I've heard people say, what What will you do if they try to outlaw owning gold? And I'm going to say, well, good luck with that. Um, here's, here's a fun little bragging point. Gold back, as of our projections for the rest of this year. We've been, we've upped the manufacturing so much that we are creating more individual pieces of gold now than any other mint in the world. Now our pieces, each individual piece is a smaller piece than some, right? The U S mint 
and the Royal Canadian Mint and some of these other big mints, right? They print, they make a lot of coins. It, they, they have more gold than we do. We have more pieces than they do at this point, which, you know, how would, how on earth would you track that down? If there's some in everyone's pocket, it's just, you know, I think, it'll, I think it's already probably beyond the reach of anyone to attempt to confiscate already. Now uh, we're getting close to a million individuals who own at least one gold back. Oh, wow. And so at this point, I don't know how they'd ever even find it all. Yeah. 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 Let, let's go into the legality a, a little mm. bit of it all. I mean, is are there are there issues? Are there regulation issues? I know you guys like are. I think I think you start like you said you started in Utah, then you issued mm-hmm. ones for New Hampshire. Why why even do it that way? Why isn't it just goldbacks? You know, and right? Why, why are they? Uh, why have a local theme or any of that? Yeah. Those are all those are all legal considerations. I am in house legal counsel for the project. Mm-hmm. We also have a chief um, general counsel. His name is Larry Hilton. Um, and Larry helped create some of the laws that makes it possible for us to do this in the sense that, you know, he helped draft them and uh, lobby for them. So Utah has something called the Utah Legal Tender Act, making gold and silver legal tender of the state. And so. Um, after that passed, they were originally just saying, let's just do this for bullion, large bullion, um, because it's a step in the right direction for us to have a, a state currency. But they didn't have a, a, the technology yet to make this. That was more than 10 years ago, 12 years ago, something like that. They passed the Utah Legal Tender Act. Um, and then a bunch of other states have followed suit since, which has been really, really helpful for us. Um, but then when we came up with the technology um, and invented the gold back, we were like, all right, now this is the legal tender of the state of Utah then. Um, and that protects us. It protects us because, one, it, it makes sure that we're not in any direct competition with the Federal Reserve or U.S. banking or any of that. Um, we're just a local currency project. You know, we're not trying to destroy them or some crazy thing. It's not a dollar, for example. Each one says it's privately issued and that it's not a dollar right on it, like right there. Uh, gee, I don't know if you can actually read that no. cameras having a hard time picking it up, but, um, but yeah, uh, we did all of those things for legal considerations. There was, uh, there were other projects people have tried to do with local currencies before that have run afoul of some laws, you know, um, we don't want, didn't want to do that. And so we wanted to be very cautious that everything we did was perfectly legal. Uh, so we researched not only, um, the, the law currency laws and things like that, um, we also just we also looked at the cases and, and looked at each of the arguments made. So we looked at the full record, not just the judgments. We looked at what are the arguments people were making against these currencies? Mm-hmm. Let's make sure we're not violating even any of the arguments that have come up with. Now, someone might create some novel argument or invent a unique law and try to get some unique law passed that just says guys named Benjamin are not allowed to have gold or some random thing. Right. Um, but without that kind of a leap. Um, we're very, very confident that what we're doing is completely legal. And because we're doing it under state law for a local economy, um, if we have ticked anybody off, if they do want to have a problem with it, they have to go through the state first, right? So let's say the Federal Reserve goes, we don't like gold back. We don't like Monero. We want to confiscate all the Monero. Um, we want to confiscate all the gold backs, that kind of thing. Let's say even if they do want to do that, uh, in our case at least, they're going to have to get through the state national – state control of the national guard here which is on our side they'll protect us and they'll have to deal with the governor and the legislature that authorized this right um in fact and and you know some people aren't always on the same page right we have the utah state tax commission and us butted heads just a little bit they wanted to see if they couldn't charge sales tax on uh, on goldbacks and they were saying, well, we do, we know that by law we can't charge sales tax on gold, but are gold backs different from other gold products? Because it's a currency, could it be different? And um, and then my argument was, uh, our argument, of course, was no. It's it's literally a it's a bullion product created by a regulated mint. It's it's a you know it, it's gold. Deal with it. Um, but there were a few people there who wanted to argue for that. Um, I'm not sure why we actually pay them a lot more taxes as as is um, than than we would if they got us shut down like that. Um, 
But the state legislature then came to our defense. The state legislature passed a bill in March, I want to say, or April um, of 2022, so not too long ago, um, that said goldbacks are legal tender, basically, in the state of Utah, um, to, trying to be very, very specific. They said the lam any lamination or container or anything like that does not change its status. If it is a gold product, it is a gold. It is legal tender. Um, each of any any created by a mint, you know, kind of thing like this is legal tender. So uh, it's for those types of protections. And that's actually why we picked the other states we did. New Hampshire, it's the free state, mm -hmm. right? Live free or die. It doesn't have any regulations or taxes that are going to be a problem. Uh, Nevada also doesn't charge sales tax. Um, Wyoming passed a legal tender act um, encouraging the use of the gold back as well, just a couple of years ago. So the Wyoming gold back is on a firm legal footing that way. Um, but, you know, some of your listeners are going to be in states where that isn't the case, where they want to charge sales tax on gold or something like that. I mean, how do you tax money? I mean, you'd think that that would be crazy, that they would charge you a sales tax to uh, turn a 20 into fives or something, right? They would never do that. Well, it's the same thing here. All you're doing is turning it from one kind of money into another kind of money. So you can't tax that. Otherwise, it wouldn't be money anymore. It'd be a commodity. Um, and so... Uh, there, but there's still a few states that have some problematic laws like that. So, how about, how about capital gains tax between going between you know gold and, and dollars? Right. Well, there's two reasons why that isn't a problem for gold back, uh, not just one. Uh, two reasons that that's not a problem for gold back is one, you never go back. If you spend twenty thousand dollars and put it into gold backs and then you spend the gold backs, you've never realized a gain. The way that you realize a gain is by buying something at one price and selling it at another. Right. Unless you buy gold backs with dollars and then sell the gold backs for dollars, you've never realized your gain. You've just owned something. You've just well, no, used I, gold I bought twenty thousand dollars worth of gold backs, and then I, an I, I and I held it, and now it's effectively worth forty thousand dollars. And then I go buy a. You, you a, mean a you mean that the purchasing power of this thing has changed? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. But until you I get back to dollars, go, but then I effectively go buy buy a car with it. Yeah, I wouldn't have to pay capital gains on the uh, on the difference in purchasing power potential. No, prices that's, change. That's what, see, that's what we see. with crypto, though. That's how crypto is handled. Right. Well, it's not handled that way with gold yet. And the second way, the is second that, way that we're protected that, is that. that, is that um, okay. Things like the Utah Legal Tender Act and the Wyoming Legal Tender Act and some of these things in those states specifically say that any change in the value of precious metals, gold, silver, platinum, so forth, is not a taxable capital gain, even if you do sell it for dollars. Right. In those states where it's legal tender. Correct. Right. And also, but not necessarily in states where it's, it's not legal tender. Maybe there capital, there may be. Right. Potentially. Event. Potentially. And of course, as an attorney, I have to tell you, you've always got to pay your taxes. <laughs> but I will say if something is completely untraceable and unknowable and you trade it for something. I don't know how they would tax that, even if you wanted to. Uh, yeah, you know, I've never even considered that. Me being a Monero person, never even, never even looked at things that that, that way. You no. know, let's yeah. let's say that you're in that situation and you spend the twenty thousand dollars to buy a bunch of goldbacks, and later on, uh, it's worth what they call forty thousand mm -hmm. um, dollars. The value of the goldbacks isn't what changes. The value of the dollars what's changed. All that really means is the dollars lost half of its value. Right, is what that means. And and if you trade that in for a car, I think your basis continues in that car. I don't think you've realized the gain unless you sell I may, for I may need you as my lawyer someday. <laughs> um, so back to the legal tender thing. So is is it also that because it's legal tender, all all vendors, you know, uh, whatever shops need to legally accept a gold back if somebody wants to come in and spend a gold back for you know that's not usually that's not actually what legal tender means. Uh, us tricky lawyers have figured out different definitions for things, right? Legal tender means you can pay your taxes with it basically, is all of that really means legally. Um, legal tender means that they have to accept it for the payment of taxes. And so when it says on a dollar bill for all debts, public and private, um, they're not saying any, anyone has to take your cash. In fact, I bet a lot of people, I bet a lot of you um, have already run into this, where you go into a shop and you say, hey, I have 20 bucks, I want to pay my bill. And they're like, oh, we don't take cash. It's already a, mm -hmm. a thing that a lot of places don't take cash at all. Mm -hmm. 
doesn't matter that it's legal tender. They don't have to take it. Mm-hmm. They can have their preferred payment method. Um, this is one of the reasons why I like to tell people, um, as an attorney, I, I have very few clients outside my work at Goldback, of course. Um, but I'll, I'll tell people if I have to do some extra, some legal favor for a friend or family member or something like that outside my uh, regular job here at Corporate Counsel at Goldback, is that I will tell them, well, I don't take payment in anything but Goldbacks. And that's legal. I yeah. don't have to right. take dollars if I don't want dollars. I can tell them, no, 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 I want, it, it's got to be Goldbacks or Monero. That's all I take. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, um, I'm allowed to do that. So, so yeah, that is the thing that's a little bit tricky. Legal tender basically just means it's endorsed by the state, endorsed by the government. But private transactions are always voluntary and ought to be. I, I believe in, I'm a voluntarist um, myself, and I believe that all transactions should be consensual. If they're not in consensual transactions, they're not transactions. They're theft or something like that. So we need consent in everything we do. And so uh, the older versions of the Goldbacks used to say voluntary local currency on them like this. Um, For legal reasons, we've updated that to specie legal tender instrument. Um, but either way, whichever year something was made, like this is a 2021 and this is a 2022, um, still, it's still the gold, the gold's right there in your hand. So it doesn't really matter what year it is, but we've updated some of that for that legal, those legal reasons. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I totally, I mean, uh, you know, all, do you believe that, you know, all, all, I'm sure you do all currencies, cryptos, whatever should just fairly compete and like made the yep. best money or monies win? Exactly. And um, the one thing that we have going into that uh, that competition that no no other currency has is that uh, 5,000 years ago and every day since, this is money mm-hmm. in the sense that it's gold. It's real money. It's tangible. Um, as much as I love um, crypto coins, especially privacy coins, um, they're, they're not as tangible. And I'm a tangible being. You know, I eat tangible food. I drink tangible drinks. Um, it's good having a tangible money that uh, when I put it in a locked box, it'll still be there when I come back. And, you know, throughout all cultures, throughout all civilizations, throughout all time, gold has been valuable. So, mm-hmm. But is that something that you really think is a quality or is that just like kind of a, a nice to have? I mean, that's something that you feel comfortable with or that you feel is fundamental to money. You know, I think that it's all kind of a confidence game. You could you could call it all a confidence game. I will trade my valuable thing that I own to you for money, but only because I have a great deal of confidence that I can then use that money at my pleasure at some future date for goods and services. Mm-hmm. So, it, you know, it, it gives me uh, the chance to, to do that now. Fiat currencies with their inflationary nature are actually pretty lousy, unfortunately, at this because they're losing their value all the time, which promotes short term thinking. It makes you think, I better get rid of this now while it's still worth something. Gold, on the other hand, is like a deflationary currency. And uh, that's the way it's been with a lot of the cryptos as well. It's been a deflationary currency is in their value goes up with time. Um, And that promotes more long term thinking. That's why people are like, I'm going to hodl this. Right. And a lot of people do hodl the gold bags. Um, I'd say probably 5% or less actually circulates in any given month. Most people, they buy the gold bags, they hold on to them because they'd rather spend their dollars that are losing value than these that are gaining value. Mm-hmm. Gresham, but, Gresham of law or right or... Yeah, Gresham's law. Yeah, so so is, that a, is that an issue you think with gaining, really gaining adoption and, you know, for, for usage? Or are people just going to. You know, it's. Hot it's your gold backs and not use them. There is an there. It is a obstacle. It is not an insurmountable obstacle. Um, what, the, what do you think will what force will overcome that obstacle? I think the main thing that overcomes that obstacle is the fact that you can get more of these. One of the main reasons why um, Goodwin's law applies is usually um, it, it applies to old money. That the old money is more valuable, but they're not making any more of it. This, we're making more and more of it. If you turn half of every paycheck you receive into goldbacks and then spend the goldbacks as much as you can within your local community, you will drive local commerce to become very, very powerful in your area. 
um, and it'll be good for everyone's business. And it won't hurt you because you can just get more of it, right? You can just turn your next paycheck also half that paycheck into goldbacks. I'd say right now you're probably better off if you did five to 10% because the amount of goods and services you can buy your goldbacks with um, is still more limited than I would like. I would say you're getting pretty close in New Hampshire and in Utah County, Utah and Salt Lake County, Utah. If you're getting pretty close to, you could probably do 20% at least of everything you buy, you could buy with goldbacks. Mm -hmm. um, but we're not yet to the universal adoption it would take for you to say, oh, I don't need dollars at all. I'm just going to do everything in goldbacks, right? It's not it's not quite there yet, but, um, but it's on its way. It's getting better and better all the time. So I think that that's that that will overcome it. It's a, it, it is an obstacle. If you look in your wallet and you see paper and gold and you're like, I don't want to part with the gold. I would say, remember, you can get more gold for that paper. Just do it. Mm -hmm. Just do it. And remember to keep getting more gold backs. And then that's what will drive it. Um, you know, we can we can bring back the gold standard into our economy. But the only way we do that is to spend it. There's there's uh, three simple steps to bringing back the gold standard nationwide or worldwide. One, you have to understand the problem. If you've been listening to Marinaro talk, I bet you uh, know what the problem is. Um, two, you have to actually get some gold backs. I'm guessing, uh, Doug, you got some. Uh, I, yeah, I think uh, I think some people bought, bought your coffee in gold backs and mm -hmm. other things like that at Pork Fest and whatnot. So you've got to obtain some. So, okay. Adam Hoddle. No yeah, you got to pile them. So you and me have achieved step number two to bring back the gold standard. I've got some, you've got some. Mm -hmm. Step number three is spending them. Mm -hmm. And you can do so without fear, like I said, because you can replace them. Because, but then once you spend them, then they actually circulate. Then you're on the gold standard already and mission accomplished. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, it, it, it's it's funny because I mean everything you say, everything you're talking about is just is you could replace Monero with with the word gold back, right? So these are the right. same, same conversations we have. Same conversations, right. same right. kinds of problems, similar like, solutions. Why do I want to spend my Monero? Oh, you need to spend your Monero because that's how we grow the Monero circular economy. But I, exactly. I, I do, you know, just being honest with you, my perspective, but obviously it would make sense because I, I am a Monero uh fanatic. Of course. Uh, you know, in comparing the two, I, I see Monero really uh, beating Goldbacks in a lot, of, you know, in ways that make it money, right? So uh, okay. arguably uh, more durable, more easily verifiable, right? Like you, you went over how you could verify it, but with, with the Monero transaction, it, it's, you know, it's... It's, you, right. it's the blockchain, right? right. So right. everyone verifies. But I would say the you know what the advantage, if anything, mm -hmm. that a goldback would have, and I guess you kind of touch, is really the stability, right? The, um, the right, the stability of the purchasing power of a goldback is unrivaled. It is the most stable currency in the world today. I think mm -hmm. you know the 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 amount of purchasing power that you get for one goldback hasn't really changed, and probably, I, I mean, it could change some. It could double, maybe. It would never triple or go up a thousand times. And the same thing with loss. It would never, it would never lose more than half of its value. Mm -hmm. um, and so, yeah, very, very stable market currency. I think the other thing too is just that this is so physical. Yeah, no, no. I, mm -hmm. Yeah, you were making that point, which I get what you're saying that that really plays more to uh, the confidence that people have in it because they're they're used to money being physical. Um, right. Uh, you know, uh, no electricity required, no internet required, no processors required. Mm -hmm. But, but yeah, I mean, we're in a digital age, right? And so it almost seems silly to do, to be going almost backwards. We're swimming upstream on this and being like, no, 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 the oldest, oldest, old way ever, gold. Mm -hmm. Um And yet I think it can be very complimentary because even though you can trade this physically at any time, um, you know, Monero is a great way to do transact digitally over, which you can do over long distances. This, you, you, you want to do this in person. Yeah. Major uh, difference there. Yeah. Right. And when you do this in person, of course, there's zero transaction cost, zero transaction friction. There's no, um, there's no fee and there's no, uh, energy expenditure, um, to do a transaction in gold back, mm -hmm. but that transaction kind of has to be in person. Yeah. 
I mean, you can mail them, of course, but the fee is physically having to come together to make the transaction, right? There, there are clients right. involved with that, right? Um, right, and yet, I, and yet, I think that you know, as as human creatures, I think there'll always be a place for cash, mm-hmm. um, and I think this is the cash of the future. But uh, I do understand and agree. If you want to transfer huge sums of value over vast distances quickly, you need you need something like Monero. You just absolutely do. Um, and so, you know, here's a um, here's a challenge for the future. Let's create a gold back privacy token, you know, or an exchange rate with Monero or, or you know, maybe even make Monero instead of one of the biggest problems with Monero, for example. Here's a here's a criticism is that Monero is usually valued in dollars. Well, what's Monero worth right now is a dollar value. Well, as soon as you're doing that, you're still allowing the dollar to have a massive influence on your entire system. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, if we get to the point where Monero was um, denominated how many gold backs a Monero is worth, mm-hmm. um, then maybe we'd get the best of both worlds. Yeah. It's, yeah. So this is what I wanted to talk to you about. So you, how do we get to, or, or is it already there? I mean, could I could I go purchase gold backs with Monero right now? Oh, yeah, absolutely. I'll sell them to you all day long. <laughs> But is there a way to do that anonymously, uh, other than through you? But you know, through right. some kind of uh, reliable system where people. Can- well, there are various gold dealers that do use the gold back, and some of them do, and some of them don't take various cryptocurrencies. Um, and I haven't checked on each of those big bullion houses as to what their opinion of Monero is. How about the gold backs? you know the institution itself i mean can, you could go on can't you buy gold backs online and have them you don't actually buy them directly from us we don't sell to the public okay we sell to big bullion houses we sell to gold coin stores we sell to online retailers of various kinds but you don't buy them direct from us so who's like the most popular online retailer of um i can tell you a few of my favorites but i'm not supposed to pick favorites amongst our children too much right yeah okay um defy the grid I love Defy the Grid. Um, they not only do survival equipment and things like that, but they also do the goldbacks. Uh, they're a great place to go. Um, the Alpine Gold is a great place. Uh, they're the ones who service the United Precious Metals Association. So if you go to upma.org, um, you can open accounts, for example. Um, you can just do sign up instead of sign in. And you can create like a savings account. Um, denominated in goldbacks. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, like I was saying earlier, it's you, it's sort of like using Venmo on your phone. We can actually transfer goldbacks between each other against our holdings at the UPMA. Um, that's So that's one of my favorites because it has a lot of services it offers that are almost banking-like. I mean, it's not a bank, but it's banking-like services. Um, I like Money know? Metals a lot. Bullion Max, they're great. First National Bullion. If you're in Arizona or Southern California, First National Bullion are. Okay. Those guys are amazing. Now, so do any of them offer the ability to essentially anonymously purchase goldbacks with cash? Like, oh, yeah, a lot of them do. I, I put cash in this bank account or send cash here. You know, well, and to to a certain extent, most anybody will. Where you run into trouble is the FinCEN reports, right? Um, know your customer laws require that if you were to buy more than $10,000 worth with cash from say Alpine gold or defy the grid. They're supposed to write out a report that says, by the way, someone paid me a bunch of cash. Um, that's unfortunately a requirement of the IRS. And if you don't like it, we should just abolish them maybe. But in the meantime, <laughs> those are the rules. <laughs> um, yeah. Now, how would that potentially work with, you know, if they were accepting crypto, if they were accepting Monero mm-hmm. with their, what, 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 I mean, this might be a tough legal question, but this is a tough legal question. And I've never dealt in a transaction that's larger than that. And right now the IRS is trying to get us, get you to log all of your crypto transactions. Um, This is one of the reasons for privacy so that it's none of their business. Then they can't get into it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, I, I, I felt really bad for a friend of mine, you know, who lost all his Monero in a boating accident. Uh, and um, You're not referring to me, are you? Because and so he doesn't that. have any of that Monero anymore. And so if the IRS wants to look into it, we just have to let them know, sorry, IRS, there's no Monero here. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, yeah. mm-hmm. Uh, really cool would be, you know, like a, a gold back ATM of sorts where I can go, yeah. I could, you know, 
send mm-hmm. arrow and, and gold backs pop out. Yeah, actually we've been working on that. Um, one of the things that's handy for that um, is that they're different sizes. Mm-hmm. Each gold back is a different size from the others. And so we've been working on a verifier. Uh, we've already got it where we can count them and dispense them um, and the other ATM functions, but we haven't come out with an ATM yet because we want you to be able to insert or retrieve all the different denominations of gold back. And right now what we kind of have is a system where you could pay with electronic means and it would dispense you ones. Mm-hmm. But we have, so we haven't quite got all of the tech Okay. working yet for, to do that but yes it's a great idea yeah and then you know you could just go and buy gold backs at an atm right right and then what do you imagine being the kyc aml requirements or something like that would it be similar to once again i think it would be one of those things where we'd ha- probably have to have a camera on it mm-hmm. and we'd probably have to um well first of all we'd need a camera for our security um, not that I want to give anybody ideas, but a gold back ATM is going to be by definition full of gold. So valuable to steal. And we don't want that to happen. Um, and then it would probably limit transactions to a certain amount unless those transactions were traceable. Mm-hmm. So unfortunately, once again, if you wanted to take a hundred thousand dollars worth of Monero for a hundred thousand dollars worth of gold backs, um, You'd probably have to do the know your customer stuff still. Mm-hmm. At the ATM, that'd be pretty wild, huh? <laughs> Just yeah. Dollars worth of gold backs flying out yeah. of the ATM. You know, I do think that is one of the things that's tricky, though. The more they weaponize money, mm-hmm. the more they can uh, seize your assets from your bank account without a judicial process. Like, apparently, they're going to allow them to do in Canada now and stuff like that. Uh, the more we see of that, the less it's money and the more it's a social credit system. Mm-hmm. And that's why I said I think that there's going to be these two diverging branches. Um, I think that fiat currencies and tax systems are going to get more and more social credit like until it doesn't matter what they call them. They're de facto what I would not presently call a social credit system. And um, and then in order to survive, cryptocurrencies are going to have to become more like Monero or they're going to have to transition to Monero and cash is going to have to become more like gold back just to survive in order to create actual privacy, which allows real ownership. And do you think, I mean, we talk about these concepts all the time. Curious. So so do you see that then as being kind of more of an underground world or it's just a power economy (laughs) that's, you know, happening alongside and it's, it's, you know, allowed to exist in its own. In, In a free society, there's just a market. Just a market, no black market and regular market, just market. The less free your society gets, the more of a black market is created. And so I almost think of it more like a slider, sliding scale. All you have is one thing. It's a market. However much of it is considered black or legitimate is a slider that the government controls. They decide how much of that market they want to label black and how much of it they want to label legitimate. Mm -hmm. But that market is going to exist. It's just going to exist. They can't. They can't change that. All they can do is delegitimize portions of it. So it's possible they may. I mean, I don't think that it's going to happen. But I do think they could try to outlaw gold. If they were to try to outlaw gold, um, even though I don't think it's going to happen, if we do that thought experiment, I think the benefit of gold back is it's too small, it's too easy to move around, it's too easy to hide. I just don't think they could do it. Outlaw it all you want. All you've done is create a very effective transparent functioning black market you can label it black all you want you can say you don't like it i think that market would continue to function do you do you kind of apply that same uh risk assessment to monero or crypto in general that they could outlaw that as well or do you see one i think that i think they could outlaw that as well i think it's actually more likely than them outlawing gold Mm -hmm. um and i think it would be easier for them to track trace or stop because nobody knows if this is in your pocket. But if you're doing the power draw necessary to be a major hub for crypto transactions, they're going to be able to see that externally. What do you mean? Though? Oh, you mean like mining? Is that what you're talking about? Sure. Or- well, yeah, but I mean, just even even if you think about uh, the way, let's say they were to outlaw all crypto transactions, mm-hmm. how would they do it? Well, they'd be looking for mining, of course, 
um, they'd be looking for any, um, they'd be looking at all the different kinds of web traffic that move around and just searching for things that look like they are portions of a blockchain mm -hmm. or any portion of it and start tracing that down to those computers where those blockchains are actually being verified. Yeah, I mean, they could um, just practically make it difficult, but Monero does have a lot of interesting, uh, you know, a lot of safeguards, though. Thank goodness. Safeguards and design criteria that make it, you know, maybe less detectable than others. Um, right. Yeah, yeah, agree there. Well, yeah, Bitcoin, Bitcoin is doomed way before Monero if that becomes the problem. Yeah. So, what, <laughs> what do you see as, um, you know, how, how things are playing out then in terms of this competition between monies? Obviously, you know, you're you're a gold back guy. So, do you are you kind of uh, a purist and you see, you know, the the best money beating all? Are you a a gold back maxi? <laughs> well, I'm not a maximalist. I actually do own um, a good handful of different cryptocurrencies. Um, I have some foreign currencies. I have I have a lot of U.S. dollars too. Let's mm -hmm. face it, and I and my precious metal holdings aren't even just in goldbacks. I do I I do prefer goldbacks. I will admit I own more value in goldbacks than in any other currency system. Mm -hmm. But I don't think that it's the only place. Uh, there, there, there's other useful things, and and there may be other bets. So, for example, I was saying a goldback's purchasing power probably won't ever more than double. Um, probably. It depends on how suppressed you think the gold market is right now. But I can guarantee you that the silver market's even more depressed than the gold market. So I do have a good pile of silver coins um, in the hopes that if that catches back up to um, a reasonable ratio with gold, that I'll make a good, uh, a pretty penny on that. Uh, so yeah, no, I do have all those things, but I do think, I do think in the end, um, I'm a bit of an optimist. Is what I'd rather say than a maximalist. I'm a goldback optimist because I do think that good ideas do generally rise to the top. The cream usually does rise to the top, um, and uh, I think we are now past the stage in the goldback project where it's just going to die on us or disappear. Um, like I was saying, the very first year, if you have a twenty, if you get a, a 2019 gold back, you might want to hang on to that because there was only a few hundred thousand of them ever made. Um, we are making four or five times every month now in 2022 um, than we made in the entire year of 2019. And so, yeah, the, the adoption rate is just... Phew, just absolutely taking off like a rocket on the goldbacks. And we don't think that that, and we don't see any market forces that are likely to slow that down. As more people learn about the goldback, I think more people are going to be adopting it. Um, but are, especially are they... because our main competition really isn't Monero. Our main competition is the US dollar. Mm -hmm. um, and as more people adopt it, I think that our market share is going to continue to increase at least until we get to the point of 40 or $50 million worth a month. Um, and between here and there, that's a huge amount of room for growth. <laughs> but do you do you think it's it's truly growing in terms of transactions as well, or people are just, oh absolutely you know, grabbing goldbacks, putting dollars into goldbacks, and and hoarding goldbacks? Are they are you seeing growth with with transactional volume? I mean, it's hard to determine. With we are gold. like I was saying, I think it's five percent or less, mm -hmm. but the overall market share is all has also been going through the roof. And I think that it remains about 5% or so um, additional circulation as it grows. Okay. And honestly, I expect that that will get better. I think it'll get to uh, 10 to 20%. Uh, it'll probably cap out at around 20% of what's in what, what exists will be actually actively being circulated. But I think that that will only increase as there are more places you can spend it, you know. One of our big uh, things this year was a whole bunch of Ace Hardware stores all started accepting the gold back. And that just Where opened up that? all kinds of random things to buy them with. And so it increased circulation. In Utah? That was in Utah? Yeah, in Utah. Okay. Now, you know, there's some great places in New Hampshire. Any of your listeners in New Hampshire, there's a bunch of great places in New Hampshire that'll take it. And frankly, I would hope that any place that will take Monero or any other um, cryptocurrency should take gold backs too. Mm -hmm. Um uh, at Porkfest, one of my favorites was they made this uh, this little sticker for us, right? Yeah, we, we use that. We have that. Yeah. Yeah. And um, I love you got Monero 
right next to Goldbacks. Yep. We, we, we kept, right. kept the Goldbacks on there and the Monero. Yeah. And of course, if you don't take Bitcoin Cash, you can pull that one off or whatever. Right. Right. Um, but yeah, you know, any place that takes cryptocurrency ought to be taking Goldbacks, I think, in my opinion, because they are a similar, um, they're, they're solving similar problems, even if we're doing so in what appears at first, at least, to be very opposite ways. One super tech, technologically advanced, the other kind of a, harkening back to an ancient age. Mm -hmm. um, and yet, really, they're in the same category. They're both technological solutions to complex problems that have existed for, for millennia, frankly. And we're only now finding out new ways to really fix those problems. Do you see a, a, a Monero back or a Bitcoin back potentially competing with gold backs or do you guys getting into that business as well? Like, I, I think so. I think what it needs to be is it needs to be a marriage. It needs to be a merger, okay. not a com not a competition. Well, I'm saying uh, this idea of uh, of you know a physical version of, of Monero or Bitcoin, which we've seen right. concepts, but not nothing done as well. I've seen concepts, but they don't work very well. And I think that Goldback has greater potential to do that than anything else. Mm -hmm. um, if somebody at the Monero project wants to turn um, and figure out how to to bridge the the virtual to the physical world gap. Um, I actually have got a ton of ideas on how to make that very, very powerful, very, very effective uh, because we are having this constant cross pollination with these different crypto projects. We've actually worked out some of the kinks, I think, that could make this a very powerful project. What we would need, though, is we need the right people and the right programmers um, to, to make a big deal out of that launch so that people will uh, have some. You're referring to like a, a goal, you know, a gold back. Like a digital a digital gold back basically if we could make a privacy coin similar to monero that was one for one exchangeable with the gold back then you'd have all the power of privacy tokens and digital transactions and all the physical guarantees of real gold but something gold. something like a, a tether you're talking about like a you can think of it like that except i don't think that tether's done as effective a job of it i mean for one thing how do you take delivery Mm -hmm. I like right. You have to do it in big bullion size pieces. Um, it's expensive and slow. And unfortunately, they also I'm just not sure about how they're fractionally reserving it. I've really had to think about this. If we were to make a digital gold back mm -hmm. project and do it right, it would have to be just as private as Monero, but it has to be backed up. Well, that's tricky because um, then you, the vaults that would hold the gold that that would that that uh, currency would be issued against the the gold holdings. Um, you have to you have to deal with all those same problems that other currencies have had to deal with. That the gold back is kind of transcended, or Monero is kind of transcended. Mm -hmm. uh, for example, fractional reserve questions. Um, people would say, "Well, just don't fractionally reserve it." This is one of the first things that a lot of gold bugs would say. Don't fractionally reserve it. Do one to one, and then only ever issue one token for every physical gold back that is physically in the vault. Mm -hmm. Problem is. That gets to look ridiculous. Um, and it's not very powerful in growing the project or growing the economy. Uh, you basically end up with this gigantic dragon's horde like Smaug um, sitting on his on his on his <laughs> piles of gold. And it's not doing any good there. It's just sitting there. It's a waste, frankly. Mm -hmm. um, and so then you say, OK, well, let's fractionally reserve it, but let's make sure there's always enough that that even with the run on the bank, that we're well in excess of what's necessary. Okay, well, how much is that? And and much, much more importantly than how much is that is who gets to decide? Who has the power to set rates? And this is how you end up with things like the Federal Reserve, where the Fed board sits down and they hold meetings and they choose rates and all these things. I don't think we, I think going down that path is a big mistake because then you're giving the power over the currency to an individual. The whole point of using the blockchain or using the gold backs is to transcend that trust. There's no authority that can manipulate you or take away your value or change what your value is. Mm -hmm. All right. And so um, I would solve that uh, primarily. I think most of those decisions should be made by the holders of the token through a DAO, a, um, a decentralized autonomous organization mm -hmm. that would therefore count and measure the decisions of the members in real time, like a direct democracy, essentially on the blockchain that it's built on. 
So for you blockchain nerds out there, if somebody thinks this sounds like a good idea or understands what I'm talking about, let's make this happen. I think there's, I think there's many, many hundreds of millions of dollars in it for both of us, frankly. Yeah, 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 yeah. But I guess, hmm, it becomes then what? Why even put it on the, or, or why even physically back it at that point? Oh well, I think the reason why you physically back it is so, so that you have the stability. Mm-hmm. You don't have um, things drastically increasing or dropping in their in their price or their value. You have the. Well, why st- not then back it with the crypto, like back it with the Monero or with the Bitcoin? You know, what, because what? frankly, they're not stable. Mm-hmm. The purchasing power of a Satoshi has fluctuated wildly over the last two years, right? And a gold back, um, a gold backed token would not it would be very very stable and really this is one of the re- one of the functions of money that unfortunately a lot of cryptos haven't done as well as the, as i'd like to see them do is without stability you cannot plan mm-hmm. um and it it uses its it, it ruins its um its usefulness as a store of value which is one of the primary functions of money uh, if you think of money in terms of functions not of in terms of substance but in terms of functions um, it has to be fungible, which means interchangeable amounts so that you can set a price. And that's the second function of money. It has to be a measure of value so that you have an idea that one thing is worth more than another or whatever. So you can create a marketplace that makes sense. So it has to be a measure of value. Um, and then it also has to be a store of value, meaning that it has to be over time stable enough that um, you can make long-term plans or, or you can lend against it uh, without it being an irresponsible decision. Um, and then uh, last but not least, um, it really has to be um, durable. And I think that's, and so in those last two is where most cryptos I think perform weekly. Um, the durability of a Bitcoin uh, is weak when you consider how many people have lost a Bitcoin? I don't know how many friends I have who've had cold storage wallets or old hard drives uh, from 10 years ago when a Bitcoin wasn't even worth a penny 15 years ago or something like that. You know, really, really early on in the project. They're like, oh, yeah, I don't know. I had a couple hundred thousand Bitcoin. I don't know what happened to them. You know what I mean? You're like, you know how much that's worth now? Right. Um, the problem is, is that they lost it. It wasn't durable enough for them to keep track of. Right. And and um, and it wasn't a good store of value in the sense that it didn't retain its value over time in such a way that they were able to predict what that was going to be worth. Uh, If they'd known, they would have they would have gone out of their way to make sure they didn't lose that Bitcoin. Right. Yeah. I don't I don't don't know if I'd give you durability. I mean, store of value, uh, you know, for now, it makes sense. But the durability, I mean, there's a lot of gold at the bottom of the ocean. Right. So, I mean, there's there's a lot. That's true. That's true. Yeah. I mean, if if you're saying the durability in terms of its ability to uh, physically exist, it's it's very. It's terms to physically. It it can still physically destroy gold. Yeah. I Um, mean, I worry that, uh, for example, an EMP. I mean, if we're talking about unlikely and extreme scenarios, an EMP could do major damage to most blockchains. Mm-hmm. Um, you have to have enough people with enough good copies of that blockchain right. in a Faraday cage right. or to survive state. that. Otherwise, nobody knows and Monero becomes worth nothing, potentially. Right, right, right. right. Um, awesome, man. Great conversation. Where can where can people learn more about goldbacks, get their hands on some goldbacks, follow you? We'll give us... For- First thing to do, go to goldback.com. Easy to remember, easy to find, goldback.com. Um, it show, it's got a lot of interesting info on there. It, we've even got a guide on there on how to get more goldbacks that'll kind of help you find um, help you find sellers, maybe even in your area. It's always good to support local commerce. Um, and lots of info. Uh, second place, I would probably say go to upma.org. That stands for the United Precious Metals Association.org. And get an account, open a goldback account. There's so many tools there that make it easy for you to um, to transact. Uh, that I think that's a really important one. Um, and uh, you know, if you sign up to our YouTube channel, you know, there's we're always throwing out new videos there about uh, up and coming news, things like that. Uh, you know, this is just the beginning of August now. It is now public uh, knowledge. Uh, all of our distributors are now announcing that on September 19th. The Wyoming Goldback will fully launch, and you can get in your hot little hands Wyoming Goldbacks. 
um, anywhere. You can get them anywhere. But, uh, you know, especially if you're in Wyoming, like get some Wyoming gold backs. It's pretty cool to have your own state law, have his, his own state currency now. Um, and that's September 19th. You can actually get those. But pre-orders started yesterday. So you can pre-order those on a bunch of the websites that sell them. And, and I, I guess that's the places to look. Yeah. I assume New York is coming right after that. <laughs> you know, New York is one of those places that's trying to tax people differently. Yeah, so New York is one of those legis lot, state legislatures lot. where I'd like to find some friends to update those laws and make them better. Yeah. All right. Well, maybe I could introduce you to some of those some of those people. Yeah, that'd be great. Um, thank you so much, man. This is awesome. Yeah. Another point. Local Monero. Are you familiar with local Monero? I'm sure local bitcoins you've heard of, right? Uh, no. Like is a, it like a separate blockchain? No, 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 no. It's a it's a peer to peer you know exchange. So it's it basically kind of picture like a, a crate. Well, I can do that. I can do that with Monero on my like my cake wallet on my phone or something. No, like no, that, no. Right? So this kind it's localmonero.co, and it's uh it's a website that puts together people looking to buy Monero and people looking to sell Monero, and they can just do it directly peer to peer. Whether nice without whatever. having to go through a, an exchange. Yeah, using whatever means mm -hmm. they want. So it'd be interesting to see them add something like a, a gold back uh, as an option. So. You know, mm -hmm. can peer to peer exchange Monero and, and gold back. So buyers and sellers that are have each. You know what I'd really like is if some of those developers wanted to put it on there so that you could push a little toggle switch um, that would switch it from how many Monero per dollar to how many Monero per gold back. Just yeah, toggle that. that uh, if we got it going on something like local Monero where there was this yep. ecosystem growing, then that, that would certainly make sense mm -hmm. at that point. That's that's the easy part. That'd be fun, yeah. and it's low hanging fruit. And frankly, yeah. it would I think it would move both projects forward. Yeah, and like I said, just other ways for people to essentially anonymously uh, get into Goldbacks via Monero. That would be that'd be really interesting. To see. That would be a lot of fun. I mean, uh, hey, give me a call. <laughs> I will. I will. <laughs> All right, man. Or I'll see you at the next Liberty Loving event. Whatever, whatever. What what is the next event you're going to? You have anything lined up? You know, I'm not recalling what the next thing is. It has been so busy over June and July. So busy over June and July that I, I don't think I've planned anything for late August. Kind of a good thing, though. Yeah, <laughs> Thank yeah, goodness. Yeah. Relax, relax. Yep. All right, man. Thank you so much. Greatly appreciate this. Always enjoy meeting you in person at these events. Um, and uh, hope to see you around. Okay. See you later. All right, buddy. Cheers. Thank you for joining us on this week's episode. We release new episodes every week. You can find and subscribe to our show on YouTube, Odyssey, iTunes, Spotify, Stitcher, or wherever you listen to podcasts. Go to MoneroTalk.live to subscribe for a full list of places where you can watch and listen. If you want to interact with us, guests, or other podcast listeners, you can follow us on Twitter. And please leave us a review on iTunes. It helps people find the show, and we are always happy to read them. So thanks so much, and we look forward to being back next week.